Right, so next up we have uh, Mr. Jason Teo. Uh, he's the general manager at Zombo, uh, and he previously was with Muda.my, which was uh, acquired for $300 million by Telenor Group. And uh, Zombo aims to be the largest and Singapore's number one uh, online freelancer uh, marketplace. So please welcome Mr. Jason Teo. Hello, uh, good morning everyone. <clears throat> um, so I'm just going to quickly introduce uh, Zomwork, um, you know, what we stand for and maybe some interesting insights. Um, luckily, none of the previous two speakers have mentioned some of the things I'm about to say. So hopefully this will be interesting to you and you can ask some questions later on in the panel as well. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, I'm from Zomwork. Dot com. Um, it is a joint venture between a Singapore and a Chinese company. Um, the Singapore company is SPH. Those of you who have been based in Singapore probably know this company. Um, reading the Straits Times is okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the Chinese... Sorry? As long as it's not the only thing you're reading. Right, right. The new paper works too, yeah. <laughs> um, and the Chinese company is called Zubazie.com. Um, for those who know Chinese, it's, uh, it's a famous pig in China and the CEO always jokes that it's because he looks like a pig. Yeah, so you know, they, they hire people at my figure in the company. Yep. Um, it started 12 years ago um, in China. Um, the most recent round of funding, they have uh, 500 million US in funding. They also took money from the Chinese government, um, which is both a good and a bad thing. Um, but quite, quite a bit of money and um, last year they came to Singapore wanting to expand out of China. Okay, so Zomberg is basically a freelancing outsourcing marketplace, uh, very similar to Fiverr, Upwork. Um, our key difference is that uh, we focus on Singaporeans because we believe that um, you know, technology is not really the key problem in this business. I think the key problem is service. The key problem is um, interaction between the clients and the vendors. And so we really wanted to focus on locals to give people a good experience. So um, only Singapore-based talents on our, com on our website. Um, and we have all the usual stuff, you know, protecting the welfare of the businesses. We have escrow systems, we have dispute management and so on. Okay, so let me get to the, the, the key topic that I'm going to talk about. Me, okay, so what, what is the gig economy? Um, so I think to me, the gig economy, the main thing is about working on a project basis. Um, it saves you cost. It saves you time and um, it ensures good quality work, right? Because ultimately, when you set KPIs and you say you need to get this done by this time, things tend to move a little bit faster and you tend to get better quality work. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we, we have this concept that we call the gig mindset. Okay, and um, typically what that means is you have work being done in a project basis. Okay, so you have a project manager who works with freelancers. And the interesting thing about freelancing is that um, it doesn't actually have to be from people outside the company. Right, so I'm going to tell you a story about what we did at Muda. I only realized actually, because I was in this company for eight years, which is a lifetime in the internet industry, but I only realized after I left that uh, this wasn't really the norm. Right, so this company... Um, uh, Muda.my was the number one classified site in Malaysia. Um, we had about a million visitors come to the site every single day, right? a billion page views a month, so relatively nice size for the, the size of Malaysia. Um, it means easy in Malay, so a very easy name to remember. 25% um, of Malaysians use this website very much, it's just like Carousel in Singapore. So if you use Carousel before, this is exactly the same thing, and just as many people know it. Yeah, so it got acquired in 2017. But the interesting thing about uh, my w when I worked at Muda is, um, you know, so this is what a traditional organizational chart looks like, right? So if this looks... Um, foreign to you, you know, uh, I would be surprised. But basically the idea is that comp you know, people are put into silos, they're put into divisions, and traditionally the way 
progress works as you move up, right? You wait for somebody to leave and you get promoted and so on. And what happened at Muda is we had project basis, right? Maybe it's because we were a tech company. I'm not sure. But what actually tended to happen is we would have like one, you know, let's say React JavaScript expert, right? At the forefront of what he's doing. And what actually happened is that he would work on project A for like a month and then he would change to project B. And then sometimes he would be working on three projects at the same time, right? And this is really interesting because it, it ended up giving us a lot of flexibility. So sometimes projects don't work and we would just cut it, you know, just like close it. And then what happened is that um, they would then move on into project B and project A and so on. And so we actually had a, a workforce that was internally flexible, right? So this, this I, I thought this was the norm, but apparently not. And so what happened was as, as a leader of one of these um, verticals, I was doing appraisals every month. You know, that, that sounds like a nightmare, but that's really the only way this can work. Because if, if this person is working for me on project A, right? I need to appraise his work in project A. And then somebody else is appraising his work in project B and so on and so forth. Right? So this actually ended up becoming a certain mindset that we had. So we had two different groups of people. We had generalists um, who were the internal existing staff. Uh, they would rotate in and out of projects on need. They would be very flexible, working on many, many different things. And then we would supplement on and off with new staff in very specific things, right? So if we needed a data scientist, for example, who is an expert in very cutting-edge technology, we would supplement that with hiring a freelancer, hiring a, a new person, maybe with specific skills. And then once the project ends, they would leave, right? So we were doing this non-stop. It was a very constant way of doing. And everybody in the company was used to doing this. And in fact, um, we got so used to doing this that we, we stopped putting people in teams, right? Because teams sounded a little bit too permanent. And we created a word called cloud, right? Because clouds form and disperse all the time. So it was a made up word. But the whole point was to tell people you need to change your mindset. Okay, that's how things are going to work in this company. So <clears throat> in order for this to work, we basically had to be goal-oriented. We had to know what the goal was in every single project that we work in. You had to be very flexible because you were changing teams literally every month. Okay, and sometimes you were working in multiple teams, right? Morning, you're working with team A. Afternoon, you're working with team B. At night, you're working yourself. So you were working very differently and you need to be able to work and, and you know, adapt to different kinds of solutions and different kinds of team members. Okay. So, so this is, um, in a nutshell, our, our concept of the, the gig mindset. And hopefully, we can expound on this a little bit more in the panel later on. Um, so Zom, just, just to tie back to Zom work again, we also actually have a trip to China um, in partnership with Nanyang Polytechnic, if any of you are interested, where you can learn more about this gig mindset. Um, interesting story, actually. Um, I was talking to my, my Chinese colleagues about the gig economy, and, and they said, oh, what is this gig economy? And I said, look at yourself, right? Projects change every two months. Um, your own team members change teams every two months. If, if that's not the gig economy, I don't know what is. And so they were shocked, and they said, same, same as us, actually. They said, I thought that's the way it's always been done. Yeah. So uh, we also have a conference in September, 6th of September, um, in conjunction with uh, NTUC. So if you guys are interested in learning more in continuing to uh, extend this conversation about the future of work and what it means to uh, be part of this gig workforce, um, feel free to join us as well. Yep, that's all we have. Thank you very much.